Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, uh, still on industrial electronics and for working on revisions that is on semiconductor diodes. If you have got a question that we are going to focus on from November 2022 exams that we are given the first part 3.1, that is 3.11, draw a simple Zena diode uh, voltage regulator circuit. Take note, we are talking about a voltage uh, regulator circuit in this case. All right. So how does uh, uh, how can we have our diodes in this case, like uh, as a voltage uh, regulator, a Zener diode as a voltage regulator? So this is what you are going to have, where we can have in this case a full wave, it, or it can be a half wave rectifier, and regulated DC voltage. All right. Then we have got. Uh, uh, VS in this case, this is our unregulated DC input. So this is a uh, unregulated uh, DC input that we are having in this case here. Uh, that's our input. Then uh, to the capacitor, and we've got our RS, uh, the series resistor to current uh, with our Zener diode in this case. Then at this part, this will be our output in this case to the load resistor uh so that is what you're going to have and also uh depending what you're what you're going to have uh in this case we do not have capacitor so meaning to say this is also going to be unregulated uh dc but as the output in this case all right so this is just a simple uh circuit that we can have in this case all right then the second part that we are given of our question was to explain uh how the output load will be regulated in this case how can we re remember i say this output is unregulated so how can it be regulated now that is our question so please take note when you are answering these questions each and every part you are supposed to understand how to answer the question. Do not just uh, rush through uh, to, to say, I know the second. No, answer the question that you are given uh, for that particular question. All right. So these are the stages that you are going to have uh, for us to regulate now the unregulated uh, output that we are given. So we are given if the current through RL increases, the Zener diode will fail with the corresponding amount. If the load current through RL decreases, the Zener diode will increase with the corresponding amount in this case. All right. So what we are given is uh, uh, the output that is uh, now regulated. Uh, we can compare with RL in this case. That is uh, our load resistor. All right. So this is uh, what you are given uh from this part so please make sure and also the application of the capacitors remember capacitors also play a role in the regulation uh process all right if you're dealing with uh, a regulation capacitors they play a major uh, role all right so that is uh what we can also include in our in our simplification or in this explanation all right so let's check the other part of the question we are given on 3.2 that um calculate the voltage drop across the junction diode of a germanium uh diode take note here we are dealing with a germanium diode in this case all right a reverse saturation current of 12 microamps if it conducts 1,5 milliamps at a room temperature of uh, 17 degrees Celsius. All right, so this is what you're given in this case. So what we need is the information uh, from the information that you're given. We are given to calculate the voltage drop. So we need to calculate uh, the voltage in this case. We do not know uh, the voltage. We are given that it's a germanium uh, diode that we are working with. Uh, in the reverse saturation, we're given a reverse saturation current which is given as IS. So IS is our reverse saturation current, which is given as uh, 12 microamps. All right, then it conducts a current of 1,5. So this is our current of uh, 1,5 milliamps in this case at a room temperature. So we are given, remember our room temperature is supposed to be in uh, Kelvins. So in order for you to convert from degrees Celsius to Kelvins, we add uh, 273. So meaning to say we are going to have our T in this case as 17 plus 273. So this will be in uh, Kelvins, which is going to give us uh, 290 Kelvins. Okay, so we're asked to calculate the voltage drop, which we have got our formula 
uh, take note, we are given this formula from our formula sheet, which says that V is equal to KT, everything over Q, and we have got uh, lean I over IS into, uh, uh, that is uh, lean I into I plus, uh, plus one in this case. All right, so I'm going to explain what you are given on your formula. We have got uh, K representing uh, the Boltzmann constant. We are given this constant, our Boltzmann constant. Remember uh, from your formula sheet, this is given as 1,38 times 10 to the exponent of minus 23 in joules per Kelvin. That is why we are supposed to have our temperature in Kelvin. It's given per, per Kelvin in this case. All right. Then also we have got uh, Q. This is our electron charge. All right. So our Q is the electron charge. Also, we are given this as 1,6 times 10 to the exponent of negative 19 uh, coulombs. All right. Then uh, we are given the current and also the saturation current. We have got these ones we are given here. So this is the information that we need. All right. So with this information, we can plug in our values to calculate this voltage. As we can see, everything, we have got uh, everything in this uh, formula. So our K, our constant is given uh, as... Uh, 1,38 times 10 to the exponent of minus 23 times the temperature, which we say it is given in uh, uh, in Kelvin in this case, and this is uh, at 290. So we've got a uh, 290 uh, over the electron charge, which is our electron charge is uh, given as 1,6 uh, times 10 to the exponent of uh, negative 19. That is the lean of uh, I, which is our current. That is uh, 1,5 milliamps. Remember, milliamps, that's times 10 to the exponent of negative 3. Everything over the saturation current. Our saturation current, that's 12 microamps. And microamps, that's times 10 to the exponent of uh, negative 6 in this case, all right, plus a 1. So this is what you're going to have in this case. So with these uh, uh, values, make sure that you properly uh, plug in your values on your calculator. This is going to give us the voltage of uh, 0 0.1 to uh, 0 0.9, uh, 6, 7, something like that, all right? So it, uh, we... Round off to three decimal places, our answer. So this is going to be changed into a one. So that's 0, 0.121 uh, volts in this case. All right. So meaning to say our voltage is going to be at uh, 0, uh, 0,121 volts. All right. So this is how we could have answered this typical type of equation. Then on the other part of question 3.3, .3, state two significant properties of a varactor diode. Okay, they actually want uh, life to ask questions on a varactor diode. Remember, we once had uh, applications of a varactor diode in uh, February 2022. Now they're asking the properties of a varactor diode. Okay, so these are some of the properties that we can have uh, that are a varactor diode makes less noise compared to other conventional diodes. So meaning to say in terms of noise, it, make, uh, it makes uh, make a lesser noise than the others. They are available at a low cost. The varactor diodes are small in size and therefore very lightweight. All right, so they are actually found in small sizes as compared to other diodes. And a varactor diodes are more reliable. Varactor diodes is no purpose when operated in forward bias. Okay, uh, that is another property. An increase in the reverse bias of a varactor diode causes an increase in the capacitance. Also, they can uh, ask us to say, which diode can actually be used as a capacitor? That's a varactor diode. So we need to say you need, you need to know the properties and also to know the applications of each and every diode that is in your syllabus. All right, so that's what we had, guys, uh, from Amazon African Motives uh, till we meet again.